every or good evening, everybody, I should say, and welcome to Evandegrift High School. We've got some more Viper baseball coming up for you. I'm Jack Farrell joining you here this fine evening in for Mr. Merle Bertrand. He will be out tonight. He should be back for the next game, so do not worry. Merle will be back here soon enough. But I will be filling in for him this evening. I got the game for you coming in about 10 minutes. Got some notes here from Merle. This marks the 524th Vipers cast overall on KMAC Sports and Vipe Live, dating back to 2009. And our it's our uh, 132nd Vipers broadcast here on the network. I'd like to thank my QA, Mr. Josh Cargill, for helping us out here, my making sure everything is staying smooth on the airwaves here. It's got a district matchup going forward this evening between the Vipers and Stony Point. They enter at 7, 8, and 1 overall. They are 0 and 1 in district play. Your Vipers enter at 11 and 6 and 1 and 0 in district play. Vipers currently sitting in second place in the district ladder with the Westwood Warriors sitting in first place as it stands this evening. In fact, Westwood, they do not play until tomorrow, so we will not have an update on where they're at in the district ladder until a little bit later on. But for now, you've got an exciting one coming up in just a minute. Some news around the Vibe Network. We've got a new sponsor there, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. It's Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Now we're going to go ahead and move into our uh, starting lineups for the evening. We'll go ahead and start with the Tigers out of Stony Point. Their leadoff man is going to be their catcher, Perry Rhinus, coming up second, also playing Second base is going to be Ivan Viegas and Braden Gosticia, Michael Pazak, Brandon Creek, Cameron Cook, Cade Crawford, Kelton Phillips, Alex Landaverde, and their starting pitcher will be Camden Waters. For your Vandegrift Vipers, leading off is going to be Nick Jackson. Coming up second will be Braden Buchanan. Then Christian Okerholm will be DHing as well as taking the hill tonight. Simon Baker, batting cleanup at fourth. Landon. Thomason at five, Will Gilbert, Clayton Moore, Ryan back, and rounding out the lineup will be Tyler Hubbard. We are just five minutes away from the first pitch here this evening. We're going to go ahead and throw it to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will have the uh, national anthem, and we will get underway. You're listening to Vipers Baseball on Vipe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really perfect corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? 
you just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, B-Y-P-E dot com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really perfect the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. VHS Baseball would like to welcome our guests from Stony Point to Venom Field for tonight's game against our Vandegrift Vipers. Starting lineup for the Vipers, number one, Nick Jackson. 15, Braden Buchanan. 29, Christian Okerholm. Number two, Simon Baker. 25, Landon Thomason. Number 18, Will the Thrill Gilbert. 13, Clayton Moore. Number five, Ryan Back. And number four, Tyler Hubbard. National anthem performed by the Vandegrift Chamber Choir. Let's play ball. Alrighty, folks, I'd like to thank you for tuning in this fine evening. If you are just joining us, weren't able to uh, be here for the pregame. My name is Jack Farrell. I'm filling in for your regular, legendary play my play-by-play man, Mr. Merle Bertrand. Should be back in the booth by the next game, but. Well, unfortunately, even the pros must miss a game every now and then, so I'm filling in for the big man, my boss. For now, we are getting ready here for the first pitch. Vandegrift will, of course, 
as the home team be playing some defense first. Christian Okerholm taking the hill here. The Vipers are entering off of a 4-1 tournament in the Leander ISD tourney. They were three uh, they won a 3-1 to one game against Round Rock in the district opener last Tuesday. I believe their next game will be uh, once again against Stony Point tomorrow. I think that'll be on the road. And then the one after that will be at Vista Ridge Tuesday the 23rd. First batter of the night getting ready to come up will be Perry Reynas First for the, the Stony Point for Tigers. The And here we go. Oker Holmes, a first pitch low and away for a ball. That one will be in there for a strike, evens the count at 1 1. As that pitch is chopped down right through the legs of the third baseman. And that'll be enough for a leadoff double. Reigns gets on, he's one for one. Ball was well hit. well hit but might have been playable Clayton Moore the third baseman had a play on it just couldn't quite get there and that'll be a lead off double to open things up for the Tigers Reigns is there back on second base showing bunt and they'll try to get him they hit him with the ball on the throwback to second base from home but Viegas was there he was trying to lay down the bunt Showing bunts again, he'll get it down the line. A right, well played. They'll be able to tag him down, going down the line there. But it will advance Reigns over to that third base side. So with one away, the Tigers got one man on third base. Next up for Tigers, Raiden Gustician. Braden Gustician. Lefty in the batter's box take the, takes the first pitch looking. It's called a strike. That one is also in there for a strike. He's quickly down 0-2. Here's the 0-2, it's hit high into the air to shallow left field, this one's playable. Will it be deep enough to score the runner? He's tagging, and it looks like it will be. This one will not be in time. So here in the first, the top of the first, Stony Point takes a quick one to nothing lead off the sacrifice fly. Mike Pazic steps up to the plate here, looking to build on this productive first inning for the Tigers. Two out here, that first pitch is in for a strike. Ogrom's pitch outside there. That'll be a ball. It'll 
even the count of one to one. That one will be high. Two one, none on, two outs. Here's the pitch. That's struck right up the middle, right to Okerholm, and he'll have an easy put out there at first base. Landon Thomason puts it away, and one run scores for Stony Point there in the top of the first. We'll head to the middle. I'm going to go ahead and take our first quick break of the broadcast. You're listening to Viper Baseball on Vipe Live. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Coming back into the top of the, or the bottom of the first inning, excuse me. Stony Point able to get one run across there in the first inning off of a leadoff double from Perry Reigns. Ivan Villegas was able to move him over the with the fly out. Braden Gosticia came in to get the run home with a fly out to left field. Four batters saw the plate for the Tigers, but that was uh, enough for for Oklahoma to lock things up and now leading off for the Vipers will be Nick Jackson. As we hear the PA say to lead things off, it'll be Nick Jackson, Braden Buchanan, Christian Oklahoma, the three do up here in the bottom of the first four, the home team Vipers. First pitch swinging, Nick Jackson fouls it off behind him. It's a lovely evening out here in Austin, Texas, about 76 degrees at the time of this first pitch. Not too windy, although some big gusts have come in every now and then since we've been here. As that pitch is low and away, that'll be the first ball. Here's the one and one Swung on and hit well. That's a single into left field. So both teams getting their leadoff hitter on. Nick Jackson, it's a good knock into shallow left four. First hit of the ball game is a leadoff single. Singles here at Vandergriff. This one's sponsored by Independence Title. And that will bring up Braden Buchanan, the catcher. So here's Waters after giving up the leadoff hit. Taking the first one, that's in there for a strike. That pitch misses. It's one and one. Be 
here's the throwback. Jackson will be in there safely, but we'll get a little dirty here in the bottom of the first inning. Waters. So we have a man stealing. Jackson will be, they're going to say he's out. It looked like he got in there, but they are going to say that Viegas got the tag down. And to start this game, Perry Reigns is just causing some trouble here for the Vandegrift Vipers with the leadoff double and now the throw out from home. It was a ball, so two and one, but this one he got a good hold of it, but it will be playable. That's going to be a fly out to center field for Braden Buchanan. Got National League rules out here for Christian Okerholm. Got a pitcher stepping into the batter's box. That first pitch is going to miss for a ball. Two outs here now for Stony Point in the bottom of the first inning. And Looked like Okerholm got hit there, and he will. He'll take the base. So some pitcher-on-pitcher -pitcher crime will send Okerholm to first base on the HBP. So second Vandy player to get on base here in the first inning. But nothing to show for it as Nick Jackson was hosed down trying to grab second base. That'll bring up Simon Baker, the fourth hitter in for the Vipers in this first inning. Righty will step into the box here. Waters checking on Okerholm at first base. First pitch swing and will be a foul ball back. Actually, that'll bloop its way over into foul territory on the right field line, and it will fall foul. No Tiger able to go over there and grab it. but that'll be strike one for the second baseman. One on, two out. Camden Waters delivers. That's going to be high and tight. And there for ball one. That's in there for a strike looking. Waters looking for the first strikeout. Both teams showing some aggression here at the plate. Not afraid to swing early in the count. As that is going to be popped up into right field. A tough play, and that's going to drop fair. And that might that is just the definition of a bloop single, but Definitely something Vandergrift will look to capitalize on here. here. Okerholm travels from first to third Baker, base. Texas Leaguer, up 25, so Simon Baker enter that at one and one. That's a single. Landon Thomason, first baseman stepping into the box now. First pitch swinging, that's a high fly ball, but playable center field. And setting up under it to grab that is Cade Crawford. That'll end the inning. Vandergrift gets, two, well, gets three on, one into scoring position. But they come up short there in the bottom of the first inning. We'll head to the top of the second. Oklahoma's going to take the mound once again. We'll be right back. 
Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. So the Tigers shortstop will be the leadoff man here. Their number five hitter, Brandon Creek. Oklahoma back out on the mound for his second inning of work. And the check swing. Gonna say he's safe on the check swing, so ball one to Brandon Creek. That'll be in there. Heater for a strike. So far early in the game, neither team letting the count develop too much. Trying to get on one early. One of the longest counts we've seen so far. Three pitches. It's one and two. Oklahoma looking for his first strikeout of the ball game. Here's the one, two. That's swung on, lifted into center field on the run for it, making a diving play, but he couldn't hold on to it at the last second. That'll be a second straight leadoff double. Tyler Hubbard tried to make the diving play. He had it, but it didn't survive the ground. So. Next up, Cameron Cook. Yep, they were going to give him a leadoff double for that. Brandon Creek, one for one. It's one to nothing here in the top of the second. Top of the first started the same way with a leadoff double. And a very similar throwback there. Cameron Cook up. They're going to go right back to it. Ball was lost. It rolled into center field, but the base runner was not aware. Wasn't able to get a jump to third base. But that'll make it one and one. Brandon Creek showing an aggressive lead on both of those last two pitches. Makes Buchanan... A little worried, got two throwbacks in a row. He's still showing bunt. That one's high and inside. That's in there for a ball. So two to one. Zero outs in the top of the second. No signal from the umpire. I believe that's 3-1 now. So in danger, letting the first two hitters get on here for Oklahoma. 
he throws this inside. That's going to be a strike on the bunt attempt. So now full count, none out here in the top of the second. Brandon Creek, leadoff hitter, knocked a double into the center field gap. Here's the payoff, and that's fouled off into the fence. Cook staying alive here. Cameron Cook working pretty solid at bat here in his first plate appearance. Six hitter playing out in left field today. And that's gonna miss high. So Cameron Creek works himself a walk after two payoff pitches. Brandon Creek still standing there at second base and now they bring up Cade Crawford, center fielder. Cade Crawford, batter. Cade Crawford with two on and none out and fouls the bunt back. Trying to play that small ball, work those guys into scoring position. Stony Point right now, they've only had one man in scoring position and they got him home. Creek up there on second base is their second. Let's see if they can stay perfect. Let's see if Oklahoma can limit them. Another bunt, and he went for it. That's 0-2. A lot of bunts being shown by the Stony Point offense. That's going to be high. Good take, 1-2. Two and two. Here's Okerholm. Checks Creek. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. That's going to be the first strikeout of the game for Christian Okerholm. He got Cade Crawford swinging. Bring up Kelton Phillips. Kelton Phillips. It's their DH. Because not every team can just field a pitcher who also wants to get out there and hit. Here's Phillips. Takes the first one for a strike. It's the first out of the inning, that strikeout against Cade Crawford. So two on, one out, one runner in scoring position. Okerholm trying to get himself out of an early jam. That's another good looking pitch, it's 0-2. Okerholm's working himself into a rhythm here into the second inning. Sometimes takes takes guys a little bit of, a few pitches just to, just to get where you're comfortable. Here's the 0-2. High and inside, that's ball one. One, two, one out. That's going to be two strikeouts in a row. Oklahoma blew by him. Now two on, two outs. Alex Landerberry. Third baseman, Alex Landaverde, steps into the box now. He'll take the first one for a ball. This is their nine hitter. We'll go back to the top of the order if, uh, if Landaverde can get on base. Perry Reigns, who is the one run that has been scored. You see it on your board there. Runners going, swung on, missed, and they can't get him there. He's going to try for home, but now they've got... Now they've got Cook in a dilly of a pickle. And so they get him there. I do believe the run still scores. 
So after all of that, we're going to head to the bottom of the second. Run will count. So I believe that's Brandon Creek. Landoverti, I believe he will now be coming back up to start the top of the third. So the last out being made by Cameron Cook. He's tagged out on the base paths. I think that's a, a two successful stolen bases and then maybe an, an E5? I think that's two stolen bases and an E5 is how I would score that. But we'll get the official word on that in just a minute. No matter though, it's uh, it's Stony Point two, Vandegrift nothing after after a uh, one and a half. Do not think that will count as an earned run going against Christian Okerholm though. Going to go ahead and keep it here. Entering the bottom of the second leadoff man is going to be Will Gilbert, playing out in right field today for the Vipers. Solid inning towards the back for Christian Okerholm. Picked up two strikeouts blown by Cade Crawford and Kelton Phillips for the Stony Point Tigers. Camden Waters getting out for his second inning of work. He's yet to strike anybody out, but put together a nice inning. Not letting um, any Vipers cross the plate. That'll be two runners out of three that have gotten into scoring position for Stony Point. Two of them have crossed the plate. Vandegrift finds themselves in an early hole. They're going to try and have to claw their way out of it here. Leading off for the Vipers in the bottom of the second, Will Gilbert, followed by Clayton Moore and Ryan Back. Number 18, seven up to the plate here. As we mentioned, second inning of work now for Camden Waters. A lot of noise coming from that <laughs> Vandegrift dugout right now. Here's the first pitch. And that's going to be a bunt foul. Tried to snap into it. Couldn't quite get this one down. So with the foul ball, gives us an 0-1 count. Water's back on the mound, getting ready to deliver that 0-1. That's going to be in there for strike two. Quick 0-2 now. Will Gilbert finds himself in a hole. Waters delivers. It's going to be a chopper to the first base side. Going to be a foul ball. So we'll fight that one off and he'll live to die another day here. Still 0-2, the foul ball. That's going to be chopped to second base. Bad hop ate him up a little bit. He's going to be in there. He's safe. Ivan Viegas, he was there, was in good position for it. But the ball kind of took an awkward hop and it ate him up. Will Gilbert is able to beat him out there. He's on. Now one on, nobody out for Clayton Moore. Dangerous play there. Gilbert almost made a critical base running error, but instead it'll just be strike one to Clayton Moore. Gilbert taking a healthy lead now. And we'll have to 
throw him back. Worried about the aggressive Will Gilbert right now. Moore showing bunt again. He gets this one down. It's a beauty. It's going to be no play at second. And they got Clayton moving Will Gilbert up. But that's what he's out there to do, sacrifice bunt for Clayton Moore. So that'll move the runner up, one out. Moves Gilbert to second, brings up Ryan Back. Number five, Ryan Back up now. It's his first plate appearance for the eight hitter. Another opportunity, another runner in scoring position for Vandegrift. They were not able to get their one runner in scoring position across the plate there in the first inning, but the offense has looked okay to start. Bats are looking warm as that one is going to be outside, ball one. You're watching Gilbert at second base as that pitch is going to miss as well. That's inside, ball two. Gilbert taking a lead. Here's Waters. The 2-0, and big swing from Ryan back. Cuts through it. It's 2-1. Waters, here's the pitch. That's going to be fouled back to the to the netting here. So two and two. Waters fought back here. Evens up the count at two and two. One out. Not quite. You're really nervous about Gilbert there on the base paths. He almost got him earlier, but he's done a good job here. Here's the pitch. That's fouled off, so he'll stay alive. Here we go. That's also fouled off. Ryan back staying alive. It's a good looking at bat out of the eight spot so far for Vandegrift. Here's the pitch. That's going to be outside. Ball three, even and up the count. Excuse me, I should say, making the count full. Ryan back, worked it to 2-0, -oh, then to 2-2, -two -two, now to 3-2, -two, and now once again to 3-2. Working up that pitch count for Camden Waters just a little bit here. Here's the 3-2. Swung on and missed. Ryan back strikes out swinging. And that's the first one for Camden Waters in a big spot. It's the second out of the inning for the Vipers. Tyler Hubbard. First pitch going to be outside. That's ball one. That's chopped down 
to third base. Long way to go, but he got it there. Alex Lundaverdi able to make the throw from first base to third to get Tyler Hubbard. So that'll do it for the Vipers in the bottom of the second, unable to get the run across the plate. Stony Point leads two to nothing. We're gonna take a quick break. I believe Alex Landaverde will be the one to lead it off for the Tigers. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Coming back out of the break. Oklahoma back on the mound for the Vipers. His third inning of work, his first pitch was out of the zone for a ball. Second pitch swing, and that's going to be fouled off over the fence out of play. Two runs scored on two hits so far for, uh, for Stony Point. Both of them lead off doubles. And uh, that one will not be a lead off double because that is a fly out to right field. Will Gilbert found his way to second base last inning. Is there for the put out. And Landaverde, of course that's sort of like his second plate appearance. So here's Reynas. Number three, Perry Reigns at the plate. And as the bunt gets down there, Reigns is unable to beat out the throw. That's a nifty play for the Vipers defense. Now Ivan Viegas in, a little bit of confusion with the lineups there. Landaverde, he comes in to, uh, like, like we said, it's the second at-bat of the game, sort of. First one doesn't count, but when they, uh, had the players thrown out on the base paths, it'll it keeps Landaverdi's at bat for the start of the next inning. So he was the first out. Perry Reigns unable to get the bunt single down, and now Viegas in, and he's facing a one on one count right now. So none on, two outs for the Vipers. Swung on and missed. Viegas is in a hole. One to two. And they got him swinging on a pitch in the dirt. And they couldn't get him on the pick. So Viega strikes out, but he's able to beat out the throw. 
So two on, or w one on, two out, and Viegas reaches on an error. Brings up Braden Gusticia. His first time up. He hit a sacrifice fly ball into left field. And it was enough to get Terry Reigns in. So the one run batted in right now goes to Braden Gusticia. He's ahead 2-0. Got to be a frustrating inning right now for Christian Okerholm. He was all but out of it. Got the strikeout, but he's still on the mound. Now it's 2-0 with a man on first base. He's showing a little bit of frustration. Catcher is going to go head up to the mound, Buchanan, and try and talk to him a little bit. So 2-0. Oh. Poker home delivers inside. That's 3-0. Oh. Michael Pazak on deck. He grounded out to the pitcher his first time up. Taken all the way. That's 3-1. Three ones fouled off back over to the Vandegrift dugout. That's going to be just out of play. Clayton Moore unable to run that one down. But now, after 3-0, Christian Okerholm has worked the count full. So 3-2, two, two outs, one man on. Gostisha at the plate. Here's the payoff. That's roped to the shortstop, long throw, and they got him. Good play from Landon Thomason, getting down there on one knee and stretching to make the play. It's the first inning of the ball game. Stony Point unable to get a runner across the plate. Vipers hold it at two to nothing. You're listening to Viper Baseball on Viper Live. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Coming back out of the break. Top of the lineup due up for Vandegrift. No run scored for Stony Point in the top of the third. They reached on an air. No runs, no hits. One man left on base. Nick Jackson stepping to the plates, the top of the order. Nick Jackson got on his first time, but he was caught stealing. Struck a base hit. It's a single for Nick his first time up. It's 
It's in there. Strike one. Camden Waters out there for his third inning of work. Misses with his second pitch. It's one and one. Second pitch swung on. That's popped up to the shallow infield. Villegas is there to clean it up. It's one out. It makes Jackson one for two on the day. Next up for the five for 15, Brayden Buchanan. Buchanan stepping into the box now. First time up, he flew out to center field. First pitch misses, that's ball one. That pitch fouled off high on the left field side. It's going to be well out of play. One one. It's been a solid outing for Camden Waters so far. He's given up just three hits through the first ten batters. No runs have scored. Here's the two and one. That misses high. Buchanan one pitch away from a one-out walk. Three ones in there for a strike. Brings up a full count. Sunlight is starting to wane a little bit. Wind's picking up just a titch. Here's the payoff. That misses inside, Buchanan. It's a good at bat. Draws the walk. Buchanan walks, bringing up pitcher Christian Okerholm. Christian Okerholm, pitcher and designated hitter. We have a pinch runner. Braylon Spring in to run. Spring on the base paths for the Vipers, of course, in high school baseball. There is a rule that says you can uh, pinch run freely for uh, for catchers and pitchers. So Buchanan will be able to remain in the game. They are pinch running for the catcher. Now the pitcher steps into the box, Christian Okerholm. One on, one out. First time up, Christian was hit by a pitch. This time he starts the at-bat taking, and it's a good take. It's in there for a ball, one to nothing, or one to no. Waters. That one's high, two nothing quickly to Christian Okerholm. Waters with one strike as he throws over. One strike out, as I should say. Able to get Ryan back back in the second inning. Now Okerholm, head in the count two to nothing. It's a pitch to hit right here. And he does hit, and he's early on it. Rips it right towards his dugout. Okerholm. Waters watching the runner at first. Here's the pitch. That's inside. Almost a second hit by pitch for Okerholm. But that'll be ball three instead. Oh. 
Oklahoma takes that one all the way for ball four. So through two plate appearances, the pitcher's been given a free base twice. So two on, one out. Next up for the Vipers, number two, Simon Baker. Simon Baker is one for one. He got that little bloop single that landed fair right behind first base. He'll step into the box trying to get some more of the bat onto the baseball. Two on, one out. Takes the first pitch, that's a ball. And right now, Waters struggling a little bit to locate. Big swing from Baker. And that's the first strike going against him. One and one for Waters. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit to right field. That's not going to drop. And that'll be a fly out to shallow right field for Simon Baker. Landon Thomason, his first time up. He uh, flew out to center field. So he's 0 for 1. Two outs for Vandegriff. One man in scoring position. First pitch. That'll be a swing and a miss for Landon Thomason. Camden Waters looking like he is on his way to getting out of a very tough start to the inning for him. Vipers can't let up here. Currently 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. That's going to miss for a ball. So a ball and a strike each to Landon Thomason. One and one coming from Waters. And that's popped up into foul territory. And he's popped out to first base. So Vipers unable to capitalize once again with a runner in scoring position. Thomason pops out to the first baseman. That'll do it for the Raptor or the for the Vipers in the third inning. No runs on a couple of walks. Two men left on base for the Vipers in that third inning. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Tigers lead it two to nothing. You're listening to Viper Basketball on Vibe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. What page to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Coming back in here to start the fourth inning, Mike Pazic, leadoff hitter now for the Tigers. Yes. 
quickly 0-2. Christian Okerholm back out there once again. Fourth inning of work for him. Comes in three strikeouts already. He's quickly ahead 0-2. Good eye there from Michael Pazak. Taken. It's his second appearance of the game at the plate. His first time he grounded out to the pitcher, Christian Okerholm. The 1 2 misses outside. It's now 2 2. Creek waiting on deck for Stony Point. Here's the 2 2. That's high and inside. He works it full. And that's fouled off. Catcher couldn't make the play. Braden Buchanan, you see him back out there behind the plate. Did come out for a pinch runner, but we addressed that rule, so he's back out there for the top of the fourth inning here. Stony Point leads it two to nothing here, still in the top of the fourth. And that's gonna be strike three. Got him looking. Christian Okerholm. It's his fourth strikeout of the game. First looking. That's the first out. Got the leadoff hitter on strikes. Went down, brings up number two, Brandon Creek. Shortstop, Brandon Creek. Steps into the box, takes the first pitch, swinging. And that's going to be his second hit of the ball game. He's going to try for second. No, he'll hold back wisely. Would have been, would have been gun, but he's able to get in there to first base. Brandon Creek now two for two. He scored that second Stony Point run in the second inning. He was the uh, leadoff man in the second inning as well. Got a double. Creek singles bringing up 23. Cameron Cook. So with that single, Brandon Creek's halfway to a cycle. The easier half of the cycle, I would postulate, but halfway nonetheless. Here's Okerholm. First pitch swing into Cameron Cook. First at bat for Cameron Cook was a walk. Comes up swinging. A one, once again, swinging. So two big hacks for Cameron Cook. Finds him in a hole, 0-2. One on, one out for Christian Okerholm. Okerholm watching Creek at first base. Going to throw over. More of a cautionary thing than anything. Here's the 0-2, and he got him, looking back to back. So we got a strikeout, and then he gives up a single, and then another strikeout. And that will bring up Cade Crawford. The first time he saw the plate, he was a strikeout victim. That first, first pitch misses ball one. At the fifth strikeout of the game for Christian Okerholm. Three swinging, two looking. And those two looking were right here in this top of the fourth. He's got Crawford up now. Just blew by him there. It's one and one. That one's high. Two to one for Oklahoma. Christian got him with that one. Two to two. 
Two balls, two strikes, two outs. One man on first base. Okerholm looking for his third punch out of the inning. Runner goes, that's fouled off. Okay, Crawford staying alive here. Center fielder tonight for the Stony Point Tigers. And he's walking, but I think that was ball three. Yes, yeah, so it's 3-2. He was right that it was a ball, but he got the count wrong. So it's 3-2, full count, two outs. Here's the payoff. Runner goes high and inside. And he walked him. So Cade Crawford reaches. Base on balls. And we'll bring up Kelton Phillips, the DH. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. So now two men on with two out. One runner in scoring position. It's Brandon Creek. He's already crossed the plate once. Certainly like to prevent him from doing that again. That pitch is in there for a strike. Here's the 0-1. That misses. Here's the one and one. Takes that looking as well. That's in there for a strike, it's one and two. One, two. That's swung on and missed. Got the side with strikeouts. Three strikeouts that inning for Christian Okerholm. Stony Point. Strands two on a base hit from Caden Creek and uh, a walk drawn by Cade Crawford. Oklahoma gets out of the jam. It's still two to nothing. Vipers looking to get their first runner across the plate here in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be right back with the bottom of the fourth. You're listening to Viper Baseball on Vipe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Will Gilbert is getting his second time at the plate here. Waters back out there in to uh, pitch the bottom of the fourth here. First pitch is going to miss for a ball. Gilbert leading off here. Yeah. 
Swung on and right to the shortstop. Still got a long way to go with it. He pulled him off the bag. That's going to be safe. Way to run it out. Throw did not make it. Gilbert's on. Lead off man once again. It's two for two. Lead off runner for the Vipers brings up 13, Clayton Moore. Clayton Moore step into the plate, 0 for 1 so far in this one. That one's in there for a strike. Clayton Moore takes it looking. Waters only with one strikeout so far in this one. Got Gilbert looking again. They throw him back to first base. It's one for one to one. Waters throws, and that's hit right to second base. And they are able to turn two. Clayton Moore grounds into a double play there. Good turnaround for the Stony Point defense. So from no outs to two outs very quickly Number five, Ryan back. for the Vipers. As that one is fouled back by Ryan back. His first time up, he struck out. He's down 0-1 here. That's one and one. Two outs, nobody on. That misses as well. It's two to one here. Ryan back. Short stop takes the pitch there. Just low and inside for him. It's worked a 3-1 count. Ryan attempts to draw a walk here. Here's the pitch. He takes it. It's full. 3-2 now for Ryan back. And swung on, and that'll get between. Between the third baseman and shortstop, Ryan Back hits that one well into left field. And there's another base runner for the Vandegrift Vipers here in the fourth inning. Another single sponsor for you, D.H. Allen Construction and South Star Bank. Josh Mason Thanks to those folks. Batting for Tyler Hubbard. We've got sub here. Tyler Hubbard was playing center field. Now he'll be replaced by a new guy here. It's number 17, Josh Masonave. Tyler will head to the bench here. Only got one plate appearance. He was 0 for 1 with a ground out to third base. That one's going to miss for a ball. It's first pitch to Josh. He's got it First base. Keep his eyes up there on the base paths. 
It's one and one inside to Mason Ave. As here's the one and one that misses, it's two to one. That pitch misses as well. It's 3 1. Waters doesn't like it. Brandon Creek doesn't much like it either back at shortstop. That's the call on the field. It's 3 1. Mason Able get another look at it. He's the nine hitter, so Nick Jackson, the leadoff man, will be up next. And that misses. So that's ball four. It's another walk for Camden Waters. Back to the top of the order for the Vipers. The two on, Nick Jackson. Yes, as we mentioned, Nick Jackson. We headed to the plate for his third appearance, but first we're going to have a conference at the mound for Stony Point. And this may be the end of the night for Camden Waters, although it may just be a little check-in. We shall see. But when he comes up, it'll be Nick Jackson. He is one for two. The single in the first inning. He was caught stealing, though. And the second time up, he popped it up. So Waters will remain the pitcher here. We've got two men on for Vandegrift. Two outs. And they've gotten their last two men on, their eight and nine hitter. So a two out rally here for the Vipers in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that's first pitch swinging for Nick Jackson. He fouls it off. Here's the second pitch. And that's going to be in there for a strike. Nick Jackson quickly down 0 and 2. And Waters has worked Jackson nicely so far. Wind's starting to blow a little bit here at Vandergrift. As that pitch misses for a ball, it's 1 and 2. So two men on for the Vipers with two outs. Waters trying to get out of another jam. Vipers just haven't been able to get anybody to cross the plate here, but here's Waters, lifts this one shallow, and that's going to be another pop out for Vandegrift. They come up empty here in the fourth. No run score. Off of a Ryan back single in a drawn walk from pinch hitter Josh Masonave. That'll wrap the fourth for the Vipers. Coming back out. After four, the Tigers lead 2-0. This, this inning brought to you by our single sponsors at Venom Field. Independence, Independence Title, D.H. Allen Construction, South Star Bank, and Steiner Ranch Wagaback. We shall see who comes out to start this top of the fifth inning for the Vipers. Would not be surprised if it is Christian Okerholm once again. He's had a pretty solid outing so far. He's thrown six strikeouts. Yep, there he is back out there once again for this top of the fifth inning. Two runs given up by this Vandegrift team. One in each of the first two innings, although I believe the one in the second inning, I haven't gotten my eyes on an official scorebook, but to me that looked like a, an unearned run um, as it was scored on, like a, like a, I'm not exactly sure how to, just, to describe it. It was a, basically somebody stole home, it felt like, but it came off of a, they were trying to get a guy out tagging him at third, but 
third baseman couldn't come up with the ball and the guy ran from third to home. So <laughs> I, uh, I don't think they're going to say that that had anything to do with Christian Okerholm's pitching. So he's only given up one run. It was in the first inning. Perry Reigns blasted a nice double from the leadoff spot. But to lead this inning off, it'll be nine hitter Alex Landaverde. He's 0 for 1 in this one. It's his Alex Landaverde at the plate. Third time at the plate as he was hitting when Stony Point did get that weird second run as he swings through the first pitch from Okerholm, takes it for a strike. Here's the 0 1, that's high. At one and one, Oklahoma delivers. That's close, but looks like they're going to say check to swing. Third baseman Alex Landaverde, rocking the number 11 in the nine hole. So two and one. That swung on and fouled off. That didn't sound good. Here's the 2-2, and that is also fouled off. So Landaverde is going to stay alive here. Top five. And this is the leadoff hitter for Stony Point, if you're just joining us. It's 2-2, two two, and he got him swinging. Landaverde goes down on strikes. It's his first strikeout of the ball game. And that's Okerholm's seventh strikeout of the game. Punching out Tigers left and right as he's settled his way in for really since the second and third innings. Next up for the Tigers, Perry Reigns. Reigns, one for two. As we mentioned earlier, probably the hardest hit ball of the game, the double roped into the outfield. And then his second time up, he tried to get on with a bunt single, wasn't able to. And this one is a grounder to the second baseman. Made that a little tougher than it needed to be, but an excellent play from Landon Thomason to grab that one. As Reynas now one for three with that ground out to second base. Two outs brings up number seven, Ivan Villegas. Ivan Villegas. He is 0 for 1 in the first inning. He had a fly out. That one's in there for a strike. The next time that he was up, not sure exactly what the rule is on that at this level, but he struck out, but uh, the catcher was unable to field it, and on the throw over to first base, they weren't able to make that throw. And now Viegas is down 0-2. Maybe that's his strategy here. Strike out, but then still get on base. As that one's lifted high into left field. Drifting to foul territory, but that's down for a fair ball. That's a stand-up double for Ivan Viegas as he got a hold of that ball. One hop, maybe two hops to the wall. If Nick Jackson weren't able to go and grab that one, but a big hit with two outs. For Ivan Viegas. Good job for Vandergrift limiting that to just two because Viegas crushed that ball. His first hit of the ball game, his second time reaching base. Gostisha takes the first pitch for a strike. That is the lone group. I believe the lone RBI in the game for uh, for either team. So he hits that one high to left field. Drifting back, and that play can't be made. He lost the ball. And Gostisha gets it in. That's going to be two bases for him as Jackson couldn't quite come up with it in the outfield. Gostisha will take it. Next 
Oh, it's a second RBI for Braden Gostisha. Got a man across. That's tough. It's another inning. Christian Okrom probably thinks he should be out of right now. Is that a play to run? For Stony Point, they lead three to nothing here in the top of the fifth. Two outs, man on second. So that one's golf to foul, 0-2. Here's the 0-2 from Oklahoma. That's high. So Michael Pazak. That's swung on and missed. Let's see if they can get this one. They got it there. That'll be a strikeout for Michael Pazak. That's the that's the eighth of the game for Christian Okerholm. However, Stony Point it does score a run on well, a double from Viegas, and then I think you'd call that an error for Braden Gostisha getting him across. It'll probably be an error out on the left fielder. For now, we head to the bottom of the fifth. Going to go ahead and take another quick break. We'll come back to some Vandegrift offense. Formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE.com. VIPE is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. What page to Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VIPEVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Coming right back into the action. It's a big spot for the Vandegrift Vipers. Leading off with their two, three, four spots. Braden Buchanan swinging through that first pitch for a strike. Camden Waters keeping the shutty alive. He's got it through four innings and now he's got Braden Buchanan down 0-2. Last time up Buchanan was able to draw a walk off of Waters. But this time, Waters gets him on a weak grounder to shortstop. That's a tough throw, and he can't make it. And so that'll be a single for Braden Buchanan. First hit of the ball game for him. Christian Okerholm, the big three hitter as well as the starting pitcher tonight. He's uh, still 0 for 0 tonight after a hit by pitch and a walk. So, so on his third plate appearance, Overholm has a leadoff batter already. And as we already mentioned, it's a big spot for them. Here's the 1 0. That's going to miss inside. So, quick 2 0 to Christian Overholm. Hitters count. If you are just joining us, Stony Point leads three to nothing on a couple 
of defensive mistakes from the Vandegrift Vipers. Vipers just haven't been able to get the bats alive when it matters. And as I say that, Okraholm crushes this one to right center field, and that's caught back at the wall. Corralled by Cade Crawford. Forces a Braden Buchanan back, but that was a rifle from Christian Okraholm, just right where the defense could get to it. So first out of the inning. But yes, as I was mentioning, um, Vandergrift has had guys on base all game. They just haven't been able to get anyone really past third. They're 0 for 3 uh, with runners in scoring position so far in this game. And those defensive mistakes have really cost them, cost them at least two runs. Uh, but yes, definitely Christian Oklahoma has given up one run. I'm Jack Farrell. I'm uh, filling in tonight for Merle Bertrand. Merle should be back going forward onto the next broadcast as this one is hit to the to the left side. No play at second base. And I think, well, they're going to get him. Looked very close. But Simon Baker unable to beat that one out. It does advance Braden Buchanan to second base. So another runner in scoring position with two outs here. Simon Baker. That'll go as a grand out. He's a one for three today. Landon Thomason steps to the plate at 0 for 2 today. Flew out to center. And he popped out to first base in his second plate appearance as this first one is a swing and foul ball. See, the wind's really starting to pick up a little bit. Going to have to mute the crowd mic a little bit. It's blowing across the field here. From right to left, from right field to left field. Here's the 0-1. Camden Waters putting together a nice game. That one misses for a ball. 1-1. One one. Thomason fouls this one off. He's down 1-2. to Gilbert, the leadoff man. Excuse me, that, <laughs> that's just wrong. Gilbert, the next man up, not the leadoff man. That one's fouled off. I think the word I'm looking for was on deck, but <laughs> I said leadoff. It's, uh, it's, it's a new baseball season for all of us broadcasters too, I promise. That one's also fouled back. Thomason battling here. Camden Waters putting together still a solid game, trying to get through five shutout innings. And he won't be able to. That is hit gently. Oh, and it took a weird bounce, and that's going to be the first run of the ball game for the Vandegrift Vipers. It was a little bloop single. Landon Thomason got it over the head of the pitcher, and when it bounced, shortstop going for the play. It kind of had some backspin on it and spun away, and no one was there. Good heads up running by Braden Buchanan. He rounded third and gets the first run of the game. First pitch to Gilbert's in there for a strike. We've got a runner here, and that's going to be in there. It's going to skip into the outfield. Thompson wisely staying there. But a stolen base is in for him. Another runner in scoring position. Vipers now one for four. We'll see if they can make it two for five. 
Gilbert took that one for a strike. It's one to two. We're going to go have a meeting at the mound here, though. And uh, Grayland Spring, I want to get the correction. He once again came in and pinch ran for Braden Buchanan, number 19. So the run will be credited to Grayland Spring. But 3-1. And the Vipers have the tying man, Will Gilbert, at the plate. But he's down in the count, 1-2. And they got Thomason on the base path. They got him um, on the leadoff. So Will Gilbert will come back to hit in the bottom of the sixth. But with that, Vipers able to plate their first runner on an infield single that scored a man from second to home. But they strand somebody at second base on the caught stealing. So moving ahead here to the top of the sixth, Christian Okerholm will once again be back on the mound for the Vipers. They get one of the runs they needed back. Got six more outs to get, and then they'll have six more outs of their own to plate two or three more runs. get word of any changes to the lineup here in just a moment if we can get them. For now, it looks like it's going to be the same group for the Vipers out here for the top of the six on defense. The leadoff man for Stony Point. I believe it's going to be Brandon Creek, who's really had Christian Okerholm's number tonight. He's two for two with a double and a single. Also was one of the runs to cross the plate. Brandon Creek, shortstop. Back into the box, first pitch. He takes it for a strike. Start ahead, like it. It'd be important here to get ahead on Brandon Creek. One of the hotter bats in the Stony Point lineup right now. And he does, he's 0-2. Here's the 0-2. Got him looking. Christian Okerholm with a three-pitch strikeout. It's number nine on the day for Christian. That'll bring up six hitter Cameron Cook. Next up, 23, Cameron Cook. He's 0 for 1 so far with a walk and a strikeout. One of the many, many victims of Christian Okerholm this fine evening. And nobody on. One out for the Tigers. Counts one and zero oh to uh, to Cameron Cook. And here's the pitch. That's going to be high. It's two to two zero. Oh. Two zero, got him on, uh, got him swinging. Despite the three runs, it's been a very excellent outing for Christian Okerholm. We mentioned two of those runs, definitely not his fault, as that one misses. It's three to one. Here's the 3-1. That's in there for a strike. The count is full. 
Three, two, one out. And that one's fouled back. Another payoff, and that's fouled off. Cameron Cook staying alive here, doesn't want two strikeouts to his name. Got him looking. Ten punch outs on the day for Christian Okerholm. This one will go in backwards. That's a third backwards K in my book here. Two outs for Oklahoma brings up number four, K Crawford. Once again, Oklahoma looking to strike out the side. Stay there. Here we go. First two pitches to Kate Crawford, a ball and a strike each. Kate, another strikeout victim on the day. That one misses his two, it's two and one. Oker home, and that's a high fly ball. That'll be into shallow right field. Easily taken care of by Will Gilbert. So nothing, nothing earned from Stony Point there. Two strikeouts from Okerholm and the final fly out to right field to Will Gilbert. Down to the bottom of the sixth we go. Vandegrift looking to get those bats alive. They trail three to one here. You're listening to Viper Baseball on Vipe Live. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, about yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. But pitch to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Six, seven, eight hitters due up here for the Vipers in the bottom of the sixth inning. They trail three to one to district foe Stony Point. Just want to make everyone aware once again, Vipe Live has a new sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Camden Waters back out for a sixth inning. He's given up a few hits, given up a few walks, only struck out one, but he's buckled down when it matters. And the Vipers, only one for five with runners in scoring position here. Gilbert gonna try to make something happen. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Six more outs for the Vipers to get this victory here on a fine Tuesday night. As it's finally getting to be spring here in Austin. 74 degrees out here right now. It is a gorgeous night for America's pastime. Gilbert the righty stepping into the box. He takes the first pitch for a ball. No one misses 0-2 or 
Here's Waters to deliver the 2-0. That's fouled back right towards us. We'll go into the net. And we'll have ball boy slash on deck man Clayton Moore cleaning up the loose balls there. Two one. That one's high and inside. Will Gilbert narrowly avoiding being hit by a pitch. But he's got a 3-1 count. And lead off man is aboard for the Vipers. A five pitch walk drawn by Will Gilbert. Clayton Moore steps into the batter's box. He's 0 for 2 on the evening. Do up for his first hit as that one misses inside. A little high as well. They keep trying to get Gilbert. He's been on base every time that, all three times that he has been at the plate today. And Waters has tried to pick him off nearly every single time. That pitch is inside as well. Now Clayton Moore with a hitter's count. It's 2 nothing. And now, yep, it looks like Stony Point will be making a pitching change. So whoever... Whoever will be uh, coming in will inherit... One runner on and a 2-0 count to Clayton Moore. Looks like they are handing the ball off to number nine, Peyton Owen. So Peyton Owen, a right-hander. Camden Waters ends the day. Only giving up one run. He had one strikeout. Did a great job to keep this Vipers offense subdued. But now we got Peyton Owen, number nine, on the mound for the Stony Point Tigers. Once again, it will be a 2-0 count still for Clayton Moore after Will Gilbert drew that walk. He's three for three on, base, on the base paths today. Not sure how many of those are going to be hits, how many of those are going to be errors, but... Gilbert doing a nice job getting on base today. We'll see if he can get across the plate here for the Vipers, although that's no longer up to him. Clayton Moore going to have to make something happen, and he will have a friendly count to do it. It's 2-0. It's one on and nobody out. We have our first pitching change of the ball game for either team. It comes in the top of the sixth. Camden Waters, excellent showing for his Stony Point team this evening. Number one, three, Clayton Moore steps back into the batter's box here. So here we go. Let's see what Peyton Owen has for the Tigers. The first reliever of the game. That's inside there for a strike. Clayton Moore taking on that one. It's 2-1. That pitch misses for a ball. It's 3-1. Vandegrift, one pitch away 
from getting the tying run on here in the bottom of the sixth. Here's the 3-1. Owen looks Gilbert back. And he takes that for a ball. So Clayton Moore draws the second straight walk of the inning for the Vandegrift Vipers. And they've got two aboard with no outs. Ryan back, one for two in the game. And a single to left field his last time up. Struck out in the second inning. He's trying to lay down a bunt here as they might have Gilbert. The pitch goes over his head. He's unable to advance, though. Could have been thrown out there. So a tough break, or a, well, a tough break and a lucky break for both teams. As Vandergrift has the benefit of not being out, but also they weren't able to advance the run there on the wild throw. For Stony Point, they weren't able to get the out, but runner doesn't advance on their wild throw. Here's 0 for 1. As that pitch misses outside, it's 1 and 1. Back, trying to lay down a bunt here. With nobody out, they're trying to advance the runners. Back, gets the bunt down, that's going to roll foul. So 1 and 2. See what the approach is here. Brian back now that he's got two strikes. The bunt was the first decision, but a lot of the times managers don't want guys bunting with two strikes. Is it's an automatic out if it rolls foul. And here's the one-two from Owen. And that's in there for a strike. Back knew it. Froze him. So one out. Still two men on for Van or for Vandergrift. Number 35, Michael Coughlin. He is coming in to pinch hit, it looks like. It's the third number nine hitter that they've had. Josh Masonave. Came in last time, drew a walk. But now Michael Coughlin will get a, uh, get a big at bat here. He used the go ahead run. And they'll put in the lefty. Going to get him 0-1 as he watches that first strike. And he's going to try to get the runners over with his lefty swing. Owen. And that's a base hit into left field. That will score one runner and it'll move the other station to station. So big pinch hit that time from Michael Coughlin. He rifled that one into left field, got every bit of it. And Will Gilbert crosses the plate. So yes, once again, Grayland Spring coming back to pinch run. It's, it's his third appearance of the game. He, uh, he does have the other run that crossed the plate, the first run, pinch hit for catcher Braden Buchanan. Now we have the leadoff hitter, Nick Jackson, one for two in this game. First pitch swinging. Tying runner now at second base. He 
As that pitch misses, it's going to get away from the catcher. Both runners will advance. So from first and second to second and third. Peyton Owen inherited a bit of a mess, and he's been able to get one out, but he's given up a hit, and now a little miscommunication there between pitcher and catcher leads to either a pass ball or a wild pitch. Now Vandegrift with the go-ahead runner in scoring position. 1-1. One one. That misses for a ball. So 2-1 to one count for Nick Jackson. Check swing. Good eye from Nick Jackson. It's 3-1. They're a ball away from loading the bases here. Braden Buchanan on deck for the Vipers. And that's a chopper to third base. Look the runner back. And they've got the man. He's going to try for home. And it looked like he got there. It looked like he got under the tag. No, they're going to call him out. The, um, the home plate umpire took some time to uh, to really decide there, and he's going to he's going to rule that he's out at home. That's a tough end to the sixth inning for Vandergrift. And that'll be a double play. That's the third double play that Vandergrift has grounded into Nick Jackson. We'll call that a ground out for him, and then they got more trying to trying to get back home. So Vandegrift is able to plate one. They do strand two men on. So yes, after a so one man scores off of uh, two walks and a single and a uh, and another walk so yes two walks to start the inning and then a single and then Vandergrift unable to do anything more there off that bang bang play at the plate we head to the top of the seventh inning Vandergrift does have a new pitcher on the mound Daniel Farrow want to give a quick thanks to Vandergrift's uh, double play sponsor. I know you're you're probably hoping for more uh, <laughs> double plays going to Vandegrift, but three times over in this one, Vandegrift has been the victim of a double play. So the double play sponsor for your Vandegrift Viper broadcast, Ranch Road Vision. Thank you to them and all that they do for the program and for the company. But yes, as I mentioned, we have a pitching change. It's going to be Daniel Farrow to take the mound in relief of Christian Okerholm, who by all accounts, an excellent game from him. Only one earned run by my estimate, and 10 strikeouts. Stranded plenty of Stony Point players in uh, scoring position, and after those first couple rocky innings, he was just locked down through the rest of it. And a tough, uh, tough break with Ivan Viegas and Braden Gosticia. Getting a couple doubles off of him. Well, one double off of him, and then a, a defensive error resulted in two bases and a run. But for now, Daniel Farrow going to try and get out of this seventh inning unscathed. And we have a pinch hitter into the ball game for Stony Point. It's number 20, Lawrence Lara. So it'll be Lara versus Farrow to start things out here in the bottom of the seventh. Gonna clean off the plate here.
First pitch is going to be in there for a strike. My QA, Josh Car Cargill, letting me know. Right now it is a 5-3 to three score for Vista Ridge over McNeil right now. As Stony Point leads this one 3-2 to two into the top of the seventh. As this is going to be a grounder to the third base side. Throw is there. Lawrence Lara grounds out to third base in his pinch hit appearance. That brings up nine hitter Alex Landa Verdi. He's 0 for 2 in this game. None on, one away here in the top of the seventh for Vandegrift. Does this one come back or right to the pitcher and Farrow? Cool and collected, puts him away. So two down quickly for the reliever here. Brings up leadoff man Perry Reynas. He is one for three in the game. He had a double to start the game, but since he is a victim of a bunt, bunting ground out, not, not exactly sure how that scored, but attempted the bunt single didn't work out for him and then his uh, third at bat he grounded out to second base so one for three from him but a big big uh, at bat to start the game for him is that got them out to that hot start scoring their first run in the first inning so that one misses inside on him he's very tied up on the plate here here's the 1-0 that's going to be a strike he caught the zone not on the check swing One and one for Farrow. Here's the pitch. That's inside. As that's fouled off, it'll be two and two. So two strikes, two balls, and two outs or the reliever, Daniel Farrow. That swung on and missed. He got him. It's winning time for the Vipers. No runs scored, no hits, no men left on. We will head to the bottom of the seventh. Going to take one more quick break on the broadcast. When we come back, we'll see if the Vandegrift Vipers can try to steal this win away in the bottom of the seventh. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Back in for the bottom of the seventh. Looks like it's going to be Peyton Owen taking the hill once again for Stony Point. Gave up one run in the bottom of the sixth inning. Very close to giving up that tying run as well, but tough play at the plate. Bang, bang goes against Vandergriff this time around. Owen. We'll head back to the mound in the leadoff hitter for Vandegrift will be Braden Buchanan. So this is right where they want it. Great lineup, great order for, uh, for Vandegrift to try and close this thing out. Try to walk it off here on a Tuesday evening. If you're just joining us here, Jack Farrell here. I'm, uh, I'm in for Merle tonight. Was unable to make it in his Iron Man streak comes to an end here. Bringing off for the Vipers in the bottom of the seventh. The fresh count, Braden Buchanan, Christian Okerholm on deck, and Simon Baker. These two teams will actually be back in action 
tomorrow. I believe that one will be on the road at Stony Point. I think Merle should be back in uh, to cover that one for you if we have it on the network. Here we go. It's Braden Buchanan in to lead things off for the Vandegrift Vipers. Peyton Owen pitching to Braden Buchanan here in the bottom of the seventh, the deciding inning here. It's getting loud here as uh, Buchanan's going to call a timeout. He'll step out of the box. Some ribbing from his teammates over there. Christian Okerholm on deck here. Didn't pitch the top of the uh, seventh there as that one's in there for a strike. Daniel Farrow came in, took care of business in the top of the seventh inning. Because that one's going to miss inside. It's one of one. Stony Point coming out with the lineup card. If I believe right, Nick Jackson was the one to... Nick Jackson was the one that grounded into the uh, ending play. So, yeah, and looks like much ado about nothing here. Line up in order and everything. It's one to one. As that pitch is golfed into right field. It might get down, but making the running play is Braden Gostisha, who's just been a thorn in the side of Vandegrift tonight. The guy that. hit that double that resulted in the third run of the game. It could have been caught in left field. And now he makes the first out of the bottom of the seventh here is now Christian Okerholm. It takes the plate. Because that one's in there for a strike. Okerholm takes two straight pitches for strikes. He's down 0-2. Baker's the next man up. He's going to have to swing there defensively, and it goes right into the dugout of Vandergrift. Over the heads of all the players, of course. Is that pitch weakly hit, but it might be right where it's got to be. Pitcher can't get to it, and that's going to be just, once again, a, a very bloopy bloop single. Vandergrift will take that right now is they've got a runner on with one out. Kind of reset, of course. That brings up Simon Baker. Time run on first, Simon Baker. Baker picked up a single in the first inning. He's one for three. Another two appearances, he uh, popped out to first base. No, excuse me, to right field and then a ground out to shortstop. That's in there for a strike. Peyton Owen dealing right now. That's swung on and missed. Simon Baker down 0-2. That swung on and missed. Strikeout for Simon Baker. Owen got him. So now one on, two outs. Game winning runner at the plate, Landon Thomason. He's one for three with a single. Oklahoma at first base. That pitch is in there for a strike. Oh wow. one. Here's Owen. That swung on. That's a weak ground ball. Tough play. Running, and the ball gets away from him. Oklahoma's going to run to third base. 
couldn't come up with the play. Vipers are still alive. Game tying run at third base. Third baseman Alex Landaverde would have had a tough play running up to get that one. And they were unable to get, or Pazak was unable to come up with it at first base. And now Will Gilbert, who has gotten on base all three times today, has a chance for some late game heroics for the Vipers. Here's Gilbert, takes the first pitch for a ball. Two outs, runners at the corners. Here in the bottom of the seventh, Gilbert takes that one for a strike. It's one and one. Gilbert getting the signs. Owen getting ready to deal. Here's the pitch, and that hits him in the back. So he walks. The base is loaded here. That brings up Clayton Moore. So Will Gilbert, great outing for him. He's four for four on getting on base today. And now Clayton Moore with a chance. Anything into the outfield wins it. Base is loaded. Two men out. Thomason at second, Okerholm at third. Gilbert at first, here's the first pitch. That misses high. One and oh. Owen deals, that's in there for a strike. It's one and one. Owen ready for the one and one. Sends that inside, it's one and two. That's in there for a strike. Clayton Moore is now down one, two, down to the final strike of the game. Peyton Owen, the one and two. And that is roped into center field. Will he be there for it? And that's caught. The ball game is over. Stony points, Cade Crawford Ripping the heart out of the Vandegrift Vipers, putting that one away in center field. It was good contact from Clayton Moore. Just couldn't find a gap for it to get down. So Vandegrift drops this one at home. Three to two, stranding the bases loaded, down one in the bottom of the seventh. So on the season, Vandegrift gonna drop to 11 and seven, one and one overall. Stony Point improves to one and one overall, or uh, one and one in district play. And uh, that'll do it for us tonight. Just wanna give a big thank you to the Booster Club president, Jennifer Farrow, and all of our sponsors who make all of these broadcasts possible. For my QA, the one, the only, Josh Cargill helping us out tonight, and our technical director, Suna Venkat, and all the fine folks at Vipe. My name is Jack Farrell. I was filling in for Merle Bertrand Hope you all enjoyed the broadcast. Thanks for letting me on air tonight. Moreau will be back with you very, very soon. So yeah, we're signing out here from Venom Field in Austin. The Vandegrift Vipers fall to the Stony Point Tigers by a score of 3-2. to two. Good night, everybody.